My mom wanted me to be a truck driver because <laughs> that would mean I'd make $24,000 a year if I went to Truck Masters and that would be twice what my father made. And she thought that would happen, but something inside of me said, I don't want to drive a truck. There's something else that matters more to me. And I decided I was not going to go for money instead of passion. And uh, the rewards have been pretty amazingly better than being a truck driver. It's not bad being a truck driver. It's just not what I was after. And I, I look back, and one of the things that helped me was my original teacher, Jim Rohn, who was a personal development speaker I went to hear when I was 17. He said something the first time I heard him, and he said, you know, it's really simple. If you want life to change, you got to change. If you want life to be better, you've got to get better. It's the only way it happens. And luck will show up for people and it'll leave them. But if you're constantly improving who you are and what you give, game over. And I remember just thinking, you know, this is a beautiful thing. You know, why is this making me cry? And you know, why is this, this great thing? Why am I so emotional about this? And then I got it. I realized in that moment, that the worst day of my life, my father leaving, had actually been the best day of my life. Because if I hadn't had that experience, I wouldn't be here today. And now because of that, I'm getting to live this life. I have the desire and the drive and the, the want to give it this way. And so I've really realized that the worst day was the best day, that that was God's gift. The gift wouldn't have been there if he would have stayed. There's an old country song that says, thank God for unanswered prayers. It's a story about this man who wants his prayer and finds out later on it wasn't fulfilled, right? So, so I tell you, I tell you the story for a couple reasons. One is, if you want to change your life, figure out how your worst day was your best day. It'll change everything, because it is if you look for it. If you find the deeper meaning, it is. You know, there's something in you that wouldn't be there without it. And the second reason is, because I want to recruit your soul. Not for your money or business. I want to recruit you in this action of going and making a difference. I want to recruit you for you, because I know if you go do a few of these things, you'll get hooked, and you'll make it a ritual, and it'll change your life. You know, whatever things you do in your life, this is what it's really about. And, you know, it won't be long before it'll be Thanksgiving here, and we still do this. You know, I start out the first year, I've had two families, and the next year I've had four. I'm going to double it. Next year I did eight, which was a lot of work. And I didn't tell anybody what I was, what I was doing because I wasn't doing it for acknowledgement. I was doing it because it was right. But after a while, I thought I could use some help. So I got my friends together and said, you know what? Instead of just going to have in Turkey, let's give thanks. Let's go build baskets with food and great stuff. Let's deliver it to people. Then we'll come in and have a big dinner, and we'll talk about what we're grateful for and have our dinner. And so we did it, and it became a ritual, and it grew. And then I built some companies, and all my employees got involved. And then about 14, 15 years ago, I started my foundation. And last year, we fed over a million people now in nine countries around the world. You know, on Christmas and Thanksgiving. You know, pretty amazing experience, right? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So I, I thank you for your applause. I wasn't telling you for that reason. I want to recruit you. And you can give your money, but I'd much prefer if you would just go deliver the food. Because I'll tell you what's great. You'll be changed by that. It's easy to give money. But when you enter an environment, you give. You don't give as the giver. You go as the delivery person, but you're really the one that made it. It'll absolutely change your life. See if you can find some ways to multiply your value to the market. And he said, your income will immediately start to change. Up until then, I was hoping that the economy would change. I was hoping that my company would change. I was hoping that my paycheck would change. I was hoping that circumstances outside would change. And then here's what I found out. It isn't going to change. So then my question was, if it isn't going to change, how will my life ever change? And here's what my teacher taught me. When you change. When you change, everything will change for you. When you get better, everything will get better for you. And that's where I picked up that phrase, for things to change, you've got to change. You don't have to change the marketplace. You don't have to change the marketing plan. You don't have to change the economy. 
You don't have to change countries. You don't have to change circumstances out there. All you've got to do is look within and see if you can change yourself for the better. And as you change, things will start to change for you. Let me give you the day that turns your life around as quickly as I can. I got four parts to the day that turns your life around and then we're finished for the day. Number one, disgust. Disgust. Disgust is a negative emotion, but it can have a very positive, powerful effect. Disgust says, I've had it. What an important day that could be. I've had it. I met a beautiful, powerful, accomplished executive lady in New York. The company invited me to come in. This lady was a vice president, extraordinary lady. I got to know her and I, I found out her story. I said, how did you get here? Big income. And she never went to high school, never went to college, never went to university. I said, how did you get here? Executive, powerful income. She said, well, let me tell you part of the scenario. She said, when I was a young mother a few years ago, she said, one day I asked my husband for $10. And he said, what for? She said, before that day was over, I decided I would never, ever She said, I started studying opportunity, found it, took the classes, put myself through the schools, did the scenario. Now I'm vice president, I make a lot of money. And she said, I kept my promise. I've never, ever had to ask again. It's called a life-changing day. The day you say enough, it's enough. Now, if you can add an act to your disgust, it helps. A man takes a shotgun to his car, blows out every window, destroys every tire, puts a hundred rounds in it and says, I've driven this embarrassing thing for the last time. <laughs> and then he saves it. He saves it. And later when somebody says, how did you become rich and powerful? He says, let me show you this car. <laughs> One day I'd had it up to here, I blew it to smithereens. Enough is enough. Here's the last three. Next is decision. Decision making is a life changing day. If you went home today and in the next few days cleaned up a list of decisions, it could furnish enough inspiration for the next five years, 10 years. What an inspiring day, the day you can bring yourself to decide. And here's the third one, desire, wanting too bad enough. Who knows the mystery of that? We don't know. But here's something I do know, sometimes desire waits for a trigger, waits for something to happen. Who knows what the happening may be? A song, the lyrics, a movie, the dialogue, a seminar, a sermon, a book, an experience, confrontation with an enemy, a conversation with a friend who finally levels with you. Whatever the experience it is, it's so valuable. And here's my best advice. Welcome all experiences. You never know which one is going to turn everything on. Don't put up the walls. The same wall that keeps out disappointment keeps out happiness. Take down the walls. Go for the experience. Let it teach you. And here's the last one. Resolve. Resolve says I will. Two of the most powerful words in the language. Benjamin Disraeli said, nothing can resist a human will that will stake its existence on its purpose. Shortly put, I'll do it or die. Best definition of resolve I got from a little junior high girl, Foster City, California. I'm going through some words one day. I got to this one and I asked the kids, who can tell me what resolve means? Some didn't know, some tried. Interesting. The last one was the best. Little girl about three rows back, she said, I think I know Mr. Owen. I said, what? She said, I think resolve means promising yourself you will never give up. 
I said, that's the best I've ever heard. She's probably giving seminars somewhere today, right? I mean, that's the best I've heard. I asked the kids, how long should a baby try to learn how to walk? How long would you give your average baby? Before you say, hey, enough, enough, no. Any mother in the world would say, you're crazy. My baby is going to keep trying what? Until, what a magic word. I want you to write it down. Until, promise yourself you'll read the books until your skills change. You'll go to seminars until you get a handle on it. You'll listen to it until it makes sense. You'll go for it until you understand it. You'll practice it until you develop the skill. Never give up until, however long that is. Step by step, piece by piece, book by book, word by word, apple by apple. Walk around the block, walk around the block. Go for it. Don't miss the chance to grow and resolve that you'll pay the price until you learn, change, grow, become. Then you'll discover some of life's best treasures when you pay that. See, if you go through life holding back, and most of us do, most of us, if we ask ourselves, have we done all we can do? Most of us will have to answer, no, we haven't. We've been holding back. We have ideas that we don't act on, things we want to do. We're afraid to take chances. We go through life trying to seek security and not coming outside of our comfort zone. And we take most of our stuff with us to the grave. And I'm saying that the fact that you're still here, that you're still breathing, You've got some more work, and you owe it to yourself. You owe it to yourself so when you get up in the morning that you can look yourself in the face and say, hey, I'm living my life on my terms. That's important, not to give up on your dream, not to give up on yourself. Now, are there going to be some moments when you want to give up? Yes. Will there be some moments when it's going to seem like it's impossible, the pain that you're experiencing, the disappointment that you're experiencing, that you're going to say it's not worth it? Yes, that's, that's going to be right there for you. It's, it's going to be in your face telling you to go back. For 30 days you must take control of your mind. It will think only about what you permitted to think. Each day for this 30-day test do more than you have to do. In addition to maintaining a cheerful positive outlook, give of yourself more than you've ever done before. Do this knowing that your returns in life must be in direct proportion to what you give. The moment you decide on a goal to work toward, you're immediately a successful person. You're then in that rare and successful category of people who know where they're going. Out of every hundred people, you belong to the top five. Don't concern yourself too much with how you're going to achieve your goal. Leave that completely to a power greater than yourself. All you have to do is know where you're going. The answers will come to you of their own accord. Remember these words from the Sermon on the Mount and remember them well. Keep them constantly before you this month of your test. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh, receiveth. And he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. It's as marvelous as and as simple as that. In fact, it's so simple that in our seemingly complicated world it's difficult for an adult to understand that all he needs is a purpose and faith. For 30 days, do your best. If you're a salesman, go at it as you've never done before, not in hectic fashion, but with the calm, cheerful assurance that time well spent will give you the abundance in return you deserve and want. If you're a homemaker, devote your 30-day test to complete giving of yourself without thinking about receiving anything in return, and you'll be amazed at the difference it makes in your life. No matter what your job, do it as you've never done it before for 30 days. And if you've kept your goal before you every day, you'll wonder and marvel at this new life you've found. Dorothea Brand, outstanding editor and writer, discovered it for herself and tells about it in her fine book, Wake Up and Live. Her entire philosophy is reduced to the words, act as though it were impossible to fail. She made her own test with sincerity and faith, and her entire life was changed to one of overwhelming success. Now you make your test for 30 full days. 
Don't start your test until you've made up your mind to stick with it. You see, by being persistent, you're demonstrating faith. Persistence is simply another word for faith. If you didn't have faith, you would never persist. If you should fail during your first 30 days, by that I mean suddenly find yourself overwhelmed by negative thoughts, you've got to start over again from that point and go 30 more days. Gradually, your new habit will form until you find yourself one of that wonderful minority to whom virtually nothing is impossible. Don't forget the card. It's vitally important as you begin this new way of living. On one side of the card, write your goal, whatever it may be. On the other side, write the words we've quoted from the Sermon on the Mount. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. In your spare time during your test period, read books that will help you. Inspirational books like the Bible, Dorothea Brand's Wake Up and Live, The Magic of Believing by Claude Bristol, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, and other books that instruct and inspire. Nothing great was ever accomplished without inspiration. See that during these crucial first 30 days, your own inspiration is kept at a peak. Above all, don't worry. Worry brings fear, and fear is crippling. The only thing that can cause you to worry during your test is trying to do it all yourself. Know that all you have to do is hold your goal before you. Everything else will take care of itself. <laughs>